What's up, guys? Welcome back to Macho Movie Madness. Oh, yeah. Today, we're going to take you on the memory of a lifetime. We're going to go all the way to Mars and have you back in time for cornflakes. It's Total Recall next on Macho Movie Madness. Now get your ass to Mars. What is up, guys? We are back here again today talking about a movie that is very special to us. This is why we love Total Recall. Andrew, which Andrew, I'm going to have him probably lead the way more on this one because this is more his movie than anything. This yeah, is his deal. Um, in, in my top five Schwarzenegger, this is number four. And the only reason it's there is because T1, T2, and Predator are around. So, right, it, right. Yeah, they're, they're tops. But yeah, this is really close. See, this is more where I would put, I would probably put True Lies ahead of this one, and yeah. maybe even Last Action Hero right yeah. around that mark for me, just because of of maybe sentimental reasons. I don't know, but uh, yeah. maybe fun. This is a good one though. This is definitely up there. Yeah, this is this has got all the things I like: sci-fi, action. It's uh, of course, it was uh, taken from a Philip K. Dick uh, short story. We can remember it for you wholesale. And so he was really big with what's real and what's not, what's actually reality. And so we'll, we'll get into that with this movie. Um, and then we might actually kind of debate at the end, you know, was this part of his uh, e recalled ego trip or, or was he actually, you know, Douglas Quaid sent to earth. And so, right. Right. Um, well, I mean, where do you want to start? Cause I've got, um, uh, I just got, it came out in 1990. I can just run through the rigmarole real quick. Um, just to kind of let people know i looked up the budget and it's kind of a broad budget there's not a set one I'm, i've got a 48 to 80 million. Oh wow so i don't know it so it's an estimated budget of some kind and i don't know if they just don't know or if that includes marketing i don't exactly know why that's such a broad number it's not really that locked down but uh the boat the total box office is 261.4 million. Oh wow. That had to have been so, one of the bigger movies of 1990 then. I, I would have I would have to think so. I would have to think so. Um what I don't even know cuz he, he didn't he have Kindergarten Cop that same year? Yes. I think yeah. I think he's he hit, it's a it was a big year for Arnold. I can't remember big. which was first. I do know Total Recall was during the summer. I do remember some trailers for it being like a 10 11 year old kid at the time. So I can I can look it up real quick. Uh it it I know Total Recall says June first. Yeah, so it, you're right about the summer part. Um, with Kindergarten Cop, I bet you it was probably later. If I had, it was December, so it was almost ninety one. But by the time it came out, so yeah, December twenty first. Woo, that had a big budget too. Wild for a comedy movie. Anyway, uh, we won't get into that right now. <laughs> um, I really, I really like. Uh, what was his? Uh, what was the director for this one? Paul Verhoeven. Paul uh, Verhoeven. Verhoeven yeah. Robocop, Robocop director. Yeah, yeah. For this. And it's funny when we get into the talking of the making of this movie. Um, you know, he had done Robocop and Arnold had told him how much he liked that movie. But you had the De Laurentiis group who Arnold used to be a part of, you know, but like during the Conan, the Barbarian and Destroyer days, they actually had the script to Total Recall. And this is would have been the late 80s. And depending who you talk to, it might have been starring Richard Dreyfus. It might have been starring um, Patrick Swayze. I've, I've heard varying reports as to who was actually there. But they were actually going through bankruptcy at the time. They were tearing down the sets. Um, as oh, Ronald Chuchette, who who helped write this, uh, mm -hmm. the, the screenplay, uh, was calling Arnold. I think by the end of the day, Schwarzenegger and his people had this script. Okay. The, the, the same day they found out, hey, this isn't going to happen. Like he had it in his possession. That's so, wild. Yeah, he was That's serious cool. about making Total Recall. That's cool. Uh, well, you can definitely tell it was a Verhoeven thing because of the squibs. I mean, it was this was a yeah. bloody, it's visceral, visceral movie. Um, but. That's that's part of its charm, I think. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of really good action in this movie. There's a lot of good. Uh, there's some good comedy, even again, just like most Arnold movies are somewhere maybe not even along like it doesn't mean to be funny, um, <laughs> but uh, there's some there's some good comedy in this as well but um a lot of uh a lot of good bad guys yeah a lot of good michael action ironside. michael ironside is awesome as yeah. hell i love michael ironside Ro Dude's ronnie got... cox 
yes. as uh, Velos Cohagen, one of my favorite villains of all time. Just yes. he's amazing in this movie. Come on, yes. Cohagen, give those people air. Give those people air. Um, I think Sharon Stone. Um, obviously another big actress yeah. from that time. Super, super hot. Uh, I also want to mention for any of the uh, the video game nerds out there like me, Michael Ironside was the voice of Sam Fisher in the Splinter Cell series. Okay, one of I my favorite. Know. One of my favorite series. By the he's way, he's just got uh, that voice. He's got a great voice. Yeah, uh, super m belongs more on the bad guy side. I think more typecast as a bad guy, but you know. Anyway, uh, you want to get into the making of of this movie? Um, did did we want to go over plot for the people who? Yeah, not... let's go over plot first. Let's do plot first. So uh, you've got Schwarzenegger as Douglas Quaid, and he's this mild mannered construction worker on Earth, and he keeps having these dreams of Mars. And he, every single night to the point where his wife is starting to get jealous of the dreams of, yes. of the woman that he keeps dreaming of. And uh, he keeps thinking he's better, you know, meant for something better. He goes to this place called Recall, who specializes in uh, memory implants. Um, but not just memory implants where you can go on vacation, but for a measly 300 credits, you can be a super spy. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. I'll get that upgraded package. Yeah. And uh, from, from that point on, this movie goes wild. He's got guys left and right trying to kill him. Um, he, he ends up going to Mars. Uh, there's a guy there like Vilas Cohagen who he's, he's taxing people on air. And there's this rebel uh, uprising by this uh, being uh, named Kawato, who nobody knows who it is. And, uh, you know, there's double agent stuff going on. It's just wild. Oh, and, it is for sure. And, and then there's that whole point, And we'll talk about it maybe toward the end of when he went to recall, did he actually get this implanted? And was this his ego trip or did this actually happen? So, yeah. Yeah. Cause there's a moment where there's a moment where, I mean, be, I mean, really it's a cutaway. You don't even know, like they talk about the implant. They talk about what he's going to do and they act like they're going to get started and they cut away to the other guy. And then next thing you know, he's, he's talking to another customer. Yeah. It was, it was the next shot. And then he gets a call and you go back in and Arnold's freaking out. Yeah. You like, blew my cover. You blew my cover. And they had to like trank him or whatever. And so, Eight I mean, times. that was, that was, <laughs> yeah. And then that was like, um, yeah, well, and that was, and then and he's like, we didn't even implant him yet. Yeah. Like we didn't, we haven't even done that yet. Yeah. So uh, I mean so, I guess I guess we can get into it now if you want to. I mean we can get into pros and cons here right after. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it because it's it's interesting. So go ahead. Yeah. Um. You know, from the time you can say it's a dream from the time he wakes up and says you blew my cover because everything they told him there in recall starts happening to him. Um. Yeah. As yeah. Soon as he everything comes that they everything they, they they told him in the design and yeah. they pay, he was paying for. Yeah. Yes. And before he goes in, um, the the junior tech's like, "Oh, blue sky on Mars. That's kind of interesting." And that happens later on in the movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. All this stuff is cleverly set up with the guy at the phone booth, you know, leaving him all these things. I don't care whether it's a dream or or reality. To me, just not knowing the amb ambiguity of the entire thing is what makes yeah. this movie great. It's kind of a thinking yeah. man's action movie. But if, if I had to look at all of the clues put along there, like how Sharon Stone looks at him when he leaves for work, how at the end of the movie, uh, instead of fading to black, it fades to white, like he's waking up and then fades to black. Um, yeah. That's a clue right there. There's so many things set up. Even the middle of this movie with with Doctor Edgemar, where they bring him in as kind of you know the safety precaution in the recall ego trip, and yeah. I want to point out that he has a red pill, almost ten years before uh, Matrix, the Matrix does, yeah, nine yeah. years before, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you, you know how they put him in there, and he's telling him you know what you do makes no difference to me, but you know I I, I really like that scene, and and from that point on, he tells him what the last part of the movie is going to be. You know, yeah, discovering alien civilizations, which he does, and and uh, so just, you, so you you so you kind of lean into the theory that it could all be it could all just be the recall dream. It it, it could. I, I I don't really care. I, I just like the question, but yeah, I think there's enough there. You could argue either way. Well, yeah, because because yeah, I mean, at the beginning, he was already having the memory. He was already having the dreams. So 
he he something in him was something about Mars was already in him, something about that woman was already there. Yeah. Um and then you you mentioned Sharon Stone's looks like like you know she might have been she may have been in on it which is why she was so hell bent on not going to Mars while she was trying to divert his attention away yeah. from you know what she what she was naturally coming back to um all, all, already which is what led him to recall in the first place. Yeah. But it is an interesting theory because everything that they they planned for him during the pre- the setup process did happen. Right, and then every and then of course everything like the recall owner had mentioned later in that meeting happened in the last part yeah. of the movie. So it's interesting. It could it could be either one. And I'm kind of like you. I probably don't really care that much. Yeah. Um, but I there's definitely enough evidence for both to support. It's yeah. just so middle of the ground, it, and I think that's what's so brilliant about the movie. Yeah. Because there it because there is enough evidence both ways that it's pretty much at a stalemate. You just yeah. believe what you want to believe at this point. On, on the other side, for the people who say that, you know, it, it was actually, it actually happened, you know, okay, so Cohagen wiped his memory, sent him there as an assassin to get close to Quato, and, you know, they, he actually went to recall and they hit a memory cap, you know, sparking all this stuff to happen. Um, I mean, I could, I could buy that too, I guess. Um, yeah. some of, it it kind of throws off some of the other things they set up to deter that, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, because I mean, that, that's a long way about going in. You wiping his memory. He was already working for him to begin with, and he was already the bad guy. And wiping his memory to go in—it's just a weird. I don't know. It's a little bit weird to me. Yeah, but anyway, I, I thought that'd be a good discussion point for the video. Like, what do you for think? Sure. Um, you know, like like I said, it, it it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just along for the ride because it's just a fun action movie. It is. I think everybody in the comment section should let us know what they yeah. think, what, what 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 their theory is, and if they care enough yeah. to, to give us that, um, I think that'd be good. Uh, what's some of your pros and cons of this movie? Um, I'm trying to think of cons before we, because we can just gloat about pros to the end of the video. Um, yeah. The uh, the score is done by Jerry Goldsmith, and yeah. it's the main theme to this, if I was to nitpick, sounds a lot like his main theme to Conan the Barbarian, if you listen to him yeah. back to back. Yeah. Um, but that's really it. Uh, I, I love this movie. And so, did you have any cons? Uh, the three titties bothered me a lot. <laughs> uh, the woman with the three titties. No, no yeah. I'm just kidding. That, that, how could that bother anybody? Um, no, uh, I, I don't. I don't. Um, I mean this is more of your movie than it is mine. I do love the movie, but I still, even then I can't really find a lot. Um, it's just, it just feels so different than almost every other Arnold Schwarzenegger movie because of the big ideas. I think it's just because it's, I think it's because of the ambiguity and I think it's the big ideas. And I think that, you know, he's been involved in predator. So he's been, he's not a stranger to the sci-fi thing, even by this point, but, um, because by this point you already had Running Man, right? Or is that Terminator? 19? Yeah, yeah, Terminator, obviously. Uh, just different. It's just so different. It's just so different. Yeah. Um, aesthetically, I'm not a big space guy. Um, I'm not a big sci-fi guy like you guys are. Um, I, it's I don't hate it. Um, but even then, I just can't. This movie is so well put together and so wild. It's hard. It's hard to find any cons in it. Yeah, you know, and it is. It is gruesome too. I mean, there's. Plenty of language. Like you said, it's visceral. Uh, I think it adds the charm, much like RoboCop yeah. uh, was. Yeah, like like uh, the scene we were talking t- talking about the language in the beginning where he gets abducted by his by his friends. <laughs> yeah, his work buddy. He's like, they, Him and his work buddies ca- uh, capture him right after he leaves Recall. Because when, le- when they figure out who he might be in Recall, they're like, drug this motherfucker, wipe his memory, and don't let him forget about this, and throw him in a cab. And get him out of here. And he wakes up, and I think he kind of remembers that he went to recall, but not really yeah. much of what's going on. And his buddy, next thing you know, his buddy catches him outside his apartment building with with guns and, and his other friends. And he's like, "Come on, tell." He's like, "What? What? Are, what's happening? What's happening?" He's like, "What the fuck did I do?" <laughs> and that's one of the funniest. You blabbed Quaid. Of, yeah, you blabbed Quaid, and that's one of the funniest things in that entire movie to me. <laughs> the, and if, if anybody who watches this is familiar if they've watched TikTok or Instagram, they've made reels out of that scene yeah. at this point, you know, like you, when you wind up in HR and you don't know why it's like, what, tell <laughs> me, 
what the fuck did I do? And that's <laughs> that's like it's just one of the it's the way he says it because that pause. It's what yeah. the fuck did I do? Uh, it's it's the funniest thing to me. But anyway, um, yeah, just that's the comedy that I'm talking about. It's so yeah. probably unintentional. <laughs> um, but the, the action is so visceral. Um, mm, wherever mm-hmm. they're chasing him around that apartment complex, and he grabs that guy in the escalator as a human shield. And he's that guy has like twenty squibs go off. On him. Oh God, yeah, it's just <laughs> I mean, so ruins him. And then Arnold just throws his bloody corpse on him. Uh, I love that. I love when he finally goes to Mars in that old woman suit that can only say two weeks. And yes, <laughs> yeah, two malfunctions. Yeah, <laughs> get ready for a surprise. All, all, all this cool technology you've got, and, you, and even that fucks up on you. Yeah, yeah. I just I was trying to think of what my favorite action scene in this movie is, but. Um, there's a lot of good ones i'm trying to think of like my favorite one-liner but it might be yeah uh, it might be to consider this a divorce yeah that's that, a might good my favorite, that might be my favorite one-liner in this movie when he shoots I, her in the head i like the end of this movie where he's using the hologram around all that alien yeah. stuff he's yes. like ah you <laughs> thought i was the real mcface you think this is the real quaid it, yeah. it is <laughs> that's it good is. <laughs> shoots him the, that's the one that, Go ahead. I'm glad you said. I know. I'm just. I'm just glad you said that because that is probably the second funniest part of this entire yeah. movie to me. Just because it's so fun. You ha ha. You thought this was a real McQuaid. It is. <laughs> this, this, just so serious. I love it. I the love one, it. They, they were going to have a party whenever Hauser came back, and so him and him and Richter are fighting on that uh, big elevator, and Richter gets his arms. <laughs> yes. You know, pulled off. And he throws him at him. See you at the party, Richter. See you at the party, Richter. I, I love that line too. That's Just a good one too. So many good ones. Yeah, he's got. It. That's the thing is, you know, personally, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just another Hollywood guy. But man, he is one of the best. His comedic timing is amazing, mixed with that accent. I mean, it's yeah, he's he's great. Yeah, it's 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 money. Yeah, um, for sure. I, I like the prosthetics on the mutants in this one. I like yeah, I like the character Benny with five kids to feed. Yes, uh, yeah, it turns out to be a double agent too. Yeah, just all the all the secondary characters are really well done. And then you've got Quato, you know, uh, whatever he takes him and, and opens up, and it it's only fitting that in a movie like this, a guy's tumor would be the leader of the resistance. I know. I, I, you, I was getting massive thing vibes there. Just that, that, <laughs> that John Carpenter style prosthetic, like effects, yeah. practical effects. I, uh, I yeah. It was know. Really uh, Rob Bottin who worked on the thing might've done this movie. I know he did Robocop for Paul Verhoeven before this. So did he? that might've really been did. a Rob Bottin effect right there. Maybe I'll have to look it up maybe and see. But, yeah. um, but anyway, this is, um, this is a great movie. If you guys, for whatever reason, have not seen this, you should go watch it immediately for sure. It's totally worth it. Um, don't even bother with the remake. Colin Farrell. The Colin Farrell. Re- <laughs> well, that's the Colin Farrell who went through that. What was it like? It, it was around the same time. I think it was 2010. He did Fright Night. I, I, he did. He did like two or three remakes of old oh movies. I think around that time because he did the he did the Fright Night. He was. He was Jerry, the vampire in Fright Night. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I, I like a, Colin, Colin Farrell, but like like all the other remakes that they've done in the last twenty years, just totally unnecessary. Don't don't mess with Total Recall. You're not gonna you're not gonna touch Rob- the charm that this movie has. And I remember going to it's the like movie, they did it with RoboCop either. Yeah, and seeing and seeing that, and it was just it was just sterile and flat and had none of the charm that this movie has. No, most of the time they don't. They they just can't. They can't do that, and, and that's why I don't know why they did Roadhouse, but they did it, and yeah. I'm still not gonna watch that shit. I mean, <laughs> I wa- I've watched all the other ones, the other remakes, and like I watched enough of them to know exactly what is gonna happen, and I don't, and it's just gonna piss me off. So yeah, um, but- I guess since we're, I mean, we always gush over these movies, and and it's probably no shock that it's going to be a high score but what would you score this thing um we did a a five right four and a half four and a half for me yeah i'd say i'd say it'd probably be about a four four and a half for me too there's just not a lot i mean obviously no film's perfect so i can't give it a five but there's really not a lot to knock on it yeah this is this is almost well you can basically say he did terminator 2 a year later this is peak arnold schwarzenegger right here he was yeah. he was yeah the guy i think wasn't he like the health ambassador for for like president reagan at the or president bush at the time 
don't know, maybe. I'm pretty sure. I don't. I you, you could definitely say from that that eighty, that eighty eight to ninety three. Yeah. Arnold is peak Arnold for sure, yeah. and he got a little bit of a comeback in ninety four with with True Lies, and then it kind of went back downhill because he just didn't have the best movies after that. Which he actually had good movies after that. They just weren't the same on the same level. Things times were just changing in the nineties. But then I say that, then you go, you know, you, you Bruce Willis kind of did the same thing. You know, he had Die Hard, then he ends up going um, Fifth Element in the mid nineties or late, yeah. was it mid, late nineties. Like that's ninety seven. Yeah, ninety seven, and that's a weird movie too. It's yeah, really like good. Movie. It's a really good movie, but it's kind of a weird sci fi type movie too. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely go probably four and a half. I'd say on on this one. Yeah, yeah, it's like one of those little Russian dolls. Uh, you know how how there's just layers and layers. Yeah, when, you, when you pop one of those things open, uh, th- yeah, that that's what this movie is to me. It's just there's every time you watch it, there's something new, and you you try to watch it from one point of view. Okay, this is a dream. Uh, watch it from the other point of view the next time, and you you just you catch different things every time you do it. It's like they took. It's kind of like they took you know some of that craziness that that Blade Runner might have had, some of that confusion. Yeah. But but they made it fun. Yeah. They made it a little easier to understand, and they made it fun. Yeah. And it's just not a serious. It's something kind of like that. It's like his own Blade Runner. Yeah. And you know, you know me and Blade Runner, it's it's up there for me. If I was to choose on any given day, unless I'm in just a completely somber mood, I'm probably going to choose Total Recall to watch yeah. just because of the yeah. fun factor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Um, no, I think we pretty well covered it. I mean, it, it's it's a fun movie. One of my favorites from that p- period of time. Um yeah, be sure and check out Total Recall if you haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a while because it's yeah. it's a wild movie. They don't make movies like this anymore with the with the squibs. You know, they just CGI blood yeah. now. It's 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 definitely a true. You definitely down feel lane. it. You definitely feel it when you watch it too. But yeah. I think you'll find enjoyment out of it for sure. Now the practical effects uh, are stuff like that's always going to sell me at the end of the day. It's always I'm always going to praise that at the end of the day over the new shit anyway. Uh, but you know that this was, and I watched it the other night for the first time in quite a while, and, and just had a lot of fun with it again. Yeah. So, yeah, if you haven't watched it, I'll definitely do that. Uh, drop a comment, and a like for the video. Let us know what you think of Total Recall. Um, what do we got coming up? We know yet what we got coming um, up next. Me and you had talked about maybe doing They Live. Speaking of, They Live. Speaking we of, haven't of really what's done, real and what's not, They Live. Yeah, exactly. So we haven't done that, and we haven't talked They Live in quite a while. So uh, definitely not for this series. So let's, yeah, let's do that next time. That'll be something to look forward to. Okay. I guess until then, we're out of here.